Chapter 1, Matter Measurement and Problem Solving. So what do you think? What is the most important idea in all of human knowledge? You could probably spend a whole semester debating that. If we limit ourselves to just scientific questions, the properties of matter are determined by the properties of molecules and atoms. That is um, a very, very important idea. And it leads us into why do we even need to study chemistry? Um, so we have learned that atoms and molecules determine how matter behaves. If the molecules and the atoms are different, then the matter behaves differently. And this allows us to control the properties of substances. It allows us to design new drugs. It allows us to make new plastics. It allows us to design motor oil that changes its viscosity in response to the temperature. All kinds of wonderful things are, are possible because of this. Um, the example given here, Properties of water molecules determine how water behaves. Water's a liquid at room temperature. That's because of the nature of the water molecules. Sugar molecules. The properties of the molecules themselves depend, uh, determine how the sugar itself uh, behaves. So by understanding matter at this molecular level, at the small particle level, then we can control how it behaves at the macroscopic level. So let's talk about a common air pollutant, uh, carbon monoxide. So every year, especially in the winter, we hear about some unfortunate family that has a malfunction with their gas water heater or something, and they get carbon monoxide poisoning. This can be fatal. Um, carbon monoxide, here's an illustration of it. The actual molecule is one carbon atom and one oxygen atom. And I'm not going to quiz you on this right now, but I'm just showing you an example of why the structure of molecules matters. One carbon, one oxygen, and they're held together by a chemical bond. This is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide can kill you. Um, what happens is the hemoglobin in your blood that carries oxygen to the different parts of your body has a preference for carbon monoxide. If given the choice, it'll pick up carbon monoxide instead of oxygen. So even though there may be enough oxygen present, because there's too much carbon monoxide present, you'll basically suffocate. So this is bad. My family had um, an experience with this at a very primitive cabin, and it was, it was horrible. Thankfully, no one died. Um, there was vomiting involved, but nobody died. Um, but that's what carbon monoxide does. Um, atoms are the submicroscopic particles that are the fundamental building blocks of ordinary matter. Atoms are rare in nature just alone by themselves. It's unusual to find free atoms. Usually they are bonded to other atoms in what are known as molecules. So atoms stuck together are called <coughs> molecules. Would you mind closing the door? The roaring traffic and the train, our lovely friend, the train. This is um, an illustration of carbon dioxide. Now, too much carbon dioxide in the air isn't good either, but it is not at all dangerous on the level that carbon monoxide is. When you exhale, you are exhaling carbon dioxide, and it's not hurting anyone. If we had an equal amount of carbon monoxide in this room, we would all be in trouble. What's the difference in the structure? It's not very different, is it? Just one atom. Here we have one carbon and two oxygens, instead of one carbon and one oxygen. Differences in the properties of the molecules affect the properties of the matter as a whole. And so when we're studying chemistry, we're looking at how are the atoms attached to each other, how do they behave, and that helps us to understand how matter that we can see behaves. So we're trying to understand um, the substances around us 
by understanding the atoms and molecules that compose them. And that's the central goal of chemistry and what we'll be studying. So one definition of chemistry is the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules.